Hi, I'm Mrs. Melanin. And I'm Belief Mel. And we're here with episode 11 of... 12. What? No, last week we did 9 and 10. This is 11. Okay. Sorry. Gosh. Hi, I'm Mrs. Melanin. And I'm Belief Mel. And we're here with episode 11 of... How How Married married Are are you? You? We're here with new mics trying to, well, these might be new mics you might be listening to, but uh, we are excited to kind of clean up this next conversation. Uh, But first, uh, what I like to do is go ahead and drop in the words of affirmation. This uh, week's words of affirmation was from a dude from Dallas um, with a very smooth, buttery voice. And I just listened to his voice and I was like, man, his voice is clean. So So uh, that's why he made the cut. That's why he made the (laughs) cut. So go ahead and check out this word of affirmation right now. What's going on, How Married Are You family? This is Donald Gaston Jr., producer of the How Married Are You podcast. And you're listening to Words of Affirmation. What we're going to do right here is go back. Hey, this is Niwa from from Houston. Um, I just want to say, I just started listening to y'all's uh, podcast. Actually, the one you just released on the 11th. This is absolutely this is incredible. incredible. Like, it, the, the, the things you guys, that y'all talk about, um, about marriage and absence free y'all and get don't stop to the beat y'all and get don't stop a freak freak y'all and get don't stop to the beat y'all and get don't stop marriage a freak marriage and absence what not these things are uh, some of the questions that I've had myself and never truly known how to like approach them or talk about them but hearing y'all Talk through them, talk to them so frankly um, is incredible. I don't know how in the world, I guess eight years of marriage does this to you, but it doesn't make sense. It sounds like work. But I don't know how in the world y'all are so um, completely like just real with each other. Like, I don't get the sense at all that y'all are, um, hide how you feel. Hide, 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 hide. And we're back. Thank you guys so much for listening. If you want to leave a voice memo, please download the Anchor app. Uh, It's really easy. All you have to do is download the Anchor app, look up uh, How Married Are You podcast, and send us a voice memo. If you have anything to say on any topic, especially the topic we're going to discuss right now, which is race, interracial dating, something or the other. Okay, so um, pick it up, Eva. Where you at? We didn't do our story about the chocolate babies. Oh. <laughs> Are we not? I thought okay, that was fine. a segment. That's, okay. Sorry. This week, Yvette left on Friday. She had a big uh, conference. Hand clap for Yvette for getting her um, speaker personality. I, oh, my gosh. Okay, yes. It was a really good... I'm actually wearing the shirt that they gave me as a result of doing it. But Congratulations yeah. to my wife for like... She's kind of getting recognition for being who she is, and it's just, I love it. I just want to say thank you. I mean, I'm, I'm proud of you for that. Okay, thank you. Does it not seem genuine? No, it, it's just weird. I don't know. I don't. I'm just proud I, of you. That's it. No, I thank you. So anyway, I'm proud of my wife for whatever she accomplished. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, so this week, my wife left me with all three kids. Um, Friday she left and I was trying to get the podcast done to drop on Thursday. Now, Anaya's sleeping. Okay. Knocked out. And it was like nine o'clock and she was still asleep. So I was like, cool. I'm in the clear. Um, and then I'm listening for her because I listened to hear her, but she turned on, she woke up and turned on the air conditioning. (laughs) Cause she had the remote. Yeah. Because she had the remote in her crib. And then I'm like, man, it's like, getting close to 10 and I'm like, man, she's still not up. So let me go check on this child. I walk in the room and just like the worship pastor, Travis had the same ex- experience. I walked into the room and she's standing up, no diaper on, butt naked. And it's poop all over the crib. She took off her diaper. She pooped, removed her diaper and poop was everywhere. And I screamed. <laughs> I, I, right now, what we're going to do on the actual version, the video version of this, I'm going to put this back up on the Patreon group. I'll show you a clip because I was recording. What's the problem, baby? 
Oh! It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. And I screamed, and she got scared of how like bad I screamed, and she was scared of her own grossness. <laughs> and so she had poop all over her legs, poop all over the crib. It was completely gross. And that was my chocolate baby experience this week. Yeah, Glenn didn't even like. I asked him how the day go. Yeah, I didn't say anything. He didn't to say her. anything to me. I came in the house, you know, we just whatever. Sat down on the couch. I was like, so how did the day go? And um, I was just like, good. He's like, good. And then he hands me his phone. <laughs> <laughs> and I see this video of my poor child, butt naked, like literally butt naked. She looks, and poop um, everywhere. She looks so distraught. And I was just like, thank you, Jesus. It wasn't me. <laughs> you know, like there are some parenting moments where you're just like, oh, thank you, Lord. You're terrible. That, <laughs> yeah. You're terrible. <laughs> that one got you. <laughs> All right. Okay. So let me see. Are there anything here? Um, so Shan said what? Shan says, you can always call us out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So and I knew that was true. Yeah. But I didn't want to, I, I didn't want to put you guys in a position where you had to speak on something that, you know, may have not been politically correct for your position, but. Um, okay. Let's do this. So most of you guys are saying you didn't take any offense to the conversation that we had last week. Um, okay, Crystal, she says this. I'm biologically Mexican, raised in black culture and Egyptian by adoption. And I think everything you guys said is fair. I've been in mostly interracial relationships because as you can tell, there's a lot going on with my race culture. I completely understand how you guys as parents would want your kids to be in a relationship where they're wholly understood. I know for me, when someone understands all the things that come with my, I guess, mixedness, mixedness, it feels like home. Yeah, I can imagine that to be the case. And I actually wanted to talk about that. I don't know if you want me to bring that up. But, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. So I'm glad Crystal brought her experience up because it kind of last, one of the comments that we did receive on the um about the podcast from last week was you guys mostly focused on black and white relationships. Yeah. You didn't necessarily talk about other races as far as interracial relationships. Mm -hmm. And so do you want to go there or no? Uh, if you speak your mind. And okay. if I have something to add, I'll add. Okay. So um, for me, I don't know why we just focused on white. I think it's just a natural, I think, I don't know. It's, everything's just black and white. But for me, I feel the same way about other races as well, only because just to keep it real, you guys, I've had um, my younger brother has been in relationships with other people whose family literally didn't like him because he was black. And so um, I don't think it's just a black and white thing. I think it's it it spans across the the boards in some areas, in some cultures. I don't know. But it's just a matter of You're on your own. I know I'm on my own. It's not a it's not, yeah, for me, it's anything. I just would love my kids to be loved well. And I think like the thing that we don't necessarily pay attention to is that if Glenn were white, let's say Glenn were white and or Mexican or Asian or whatever, and we were in a relationship together and we were fine with our relationship. That's totally fine. But when we decide to get married, like I know there's we had a, we've had conversations on the whole leave and cleave topic, but you're still marrying like that person's family. And for me, like family is very important. I don't just like marry Glenn. I said like a lot. I'm so sorry. I hate it when people do that. Um, I don't just marry Glenn and then forget about my family. We don't literally leave them. They're still a part of our lives as much as we allow them to be. And so, um, I mean, for some people, it might be easier for them to leave their family. But for me, it's not. And so I feel like you're marrying all like all of that, even though maybe you're not okay. supposed to. So I, I kind of wanted to discuss some things. Um, so some people were offended by... Me saying that I'm going to have a reaction if my child brings home someone who isn't from black culture. Um, now, 
I totally understand that. Like, why wouldn't I just be like, yeah, of course. You know what I'm saying? Like, I get it. However, I'm being honest in saying I would be surprised. Now, I wouldn't be... I know she's crying. Um, Do you think she pooped? Anaya might be joining this podcast, y'all. Oh, no. That's the worst. What am I supposed to do? Close I'm the gonna... door so you can't hear her. She'd be all right for 45 minutes. <laughs> I'm going to go check on my child. I'll be right back. Hey, check the you camera. You can keep check, talking. Check the camera real quick. Oh, you want me to check the camera Please. and not yeah, my why child? Are you getting up? Okay. Why okay. are you getting up? Okay. Don't knock over nothing now. Uh, yeah, you so... Like, over? If you want. Um, am I in focus? Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, like, I think it's okay if I have... A reaction. I think that's an honest thing. I think most people would like to pretend that they won't react at all. And that's scary because I know there's a discussion that will be had about, hmm, so, you know, Jessica's dating someone who's black or, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's still a discussion that is had. And I feel like like, that's just honest. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's okay to be honest about how you feel. Um, I'd rather someone be honest than not and pretend that everything is fine. You know what I'm saying? And it is fine. Like, it's okay if they date out, date another race. Like, I'm totally okay with that. But I'm not going to be uh, fake about how I'm going to react to it. Um, another thing that I think is important is to understand that when I say I'm going to react is because... When, when I, when I'm realizing, okay, like, okay, my son may be dating outside his race, which is awesome, but my daughter may be dating outside her race, and this is totally a premature conversation. Um, like, I am going to internalize and think about my experiences with that, with people of that culture, and think, I hope that my son has a positive experience as well. Um, one of the first questions I would ask, because I'm super direct, I would say. How does your mother and your father feel about you dating a black woman or a black black man? Like I'm, I would be really curious about that. Um, I don't want to pretend that I'm not black and they are not a different color. Like, and the, and it's and it's interesting because a lot of the people who had an issue with what we were saying were like, "Yo, I know that we are rooted in Christ, and that is the only thing that really matters." Very true. Like, that really does matter. But what happens when you, re- you, like, you start to understand, like, your blackness mm-hmm. as well? You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, sometimes I forget I'm black, y'all. Like, I go outside and then I see somebody who reacts to me and I'm like, oh, yeah, because I'm black. I, I, re- I remember because of what happens to me interacting with other people. Like I don't want to I don't want to feel like like as a Christian I'm supposed to pretend like being black isn't a part of my identity. Like my identity is rooted in Christ, yes, but I'm also black, so I also see things from a little bit of a different perspective. I think it's important that if you're going to date outside your race, you have to be in love or interested in understanding not just that person, but that person's culture and where they come from. Um I know people who are in inter- interracial relationships and speak Spanish. Like black dudes who speak Spanish, who come from Latin yeah. communities. You know what I'm saying? Someone who at least took the time to invest and know how to feel someone else's pain mm-hmm. um, and help them process through things that happen in media and society that will affect us differently. When I said what I said about, oh yeah, I will react. One dude said, if a white dude said that he would have a reaction if his daughter brought home a black person. It would be racist. It, they'd, be, they'd be called a racist. And I said, not by me. Like, well, he's just like, well, I think it's like kind of like we have to walk on eggshells for black people. Like, I got to walk on eggshells every single day, everywhere. Like, like certain people can't do certain things. <laughs> okay, so you can't say something. You know how many things I can't do because I'm black? It ain't fair. Let's not pretend that racism doesn't exist or like we're past that. Like that's something super prevalent in, in, you know, where we live, where we're at, what we have to deal with on a day-to-day basis. Like let's not pretend 
that this isn't real. Do you have anything to add here? Yeah. Well, I was just going to say, like, it is a thing. Like, I literally have to think of myself as, like, I wonder sometimes, like, do, and I don't know why, but I'm just thinking white people. And I don't, I think maybe it's because we live in Southern California or whatever. But recently I was at a baby shower and it just so happened that (laughs) several of Probably, you know what? It ended up being all of the black people at the baby shower ended up at the same table. And it really, I think it just happened organically. Like it wasn't something that was forced. It just kind of happened. But then someone came to the table and they were like, hey, is this the black table? And then I'm looking around at all the other tables and I'm like, well, there's several white tables out there. And I'm like, I don't know. It's just... For me, like I've always like even when I I went to a predominantly white university and so it was the same thing when I'd walk into the cafeteria and I'd see my African-American friends, I'd want to go sit with them. But at the same time, I'd be concerned that I'm making other people in the room feel uncomfortable. But at the same time, are those people feeling concerned about me feeling uncomfortable that there's a group of white people at this table and that table and every other table in the room? Um, so a lot of times I take considerations in the fact that I'm black for other people and I'm kind of getting to the point in my life where I'm just like, I really don't care. And I was talking to Glenn earlier today cause I was like, man, I'm starting to feel a little bit like I'm starting to feel such a way where I'm like caring what people think about what about our discussion last week. And I really don't like that the way I didn't like the way that I was feeling. Like I didn't want to feel like it mattered what other people were thinking about my literal thoughts. Like it's okay for me to think these things because I have an experience as a black woman in America, in Southern California. And so I just think we are more aware of our blackness. We're made more aware of our blackness more often than other people are about their own race about I'm and and in this case I am necessarily talking about their whiteness because I I would think that people from the Hispanic culture or Asian culture would feel similar to us depending on where they live you know what I mean yeah I just think you know the stigma is there like being you know being dark-skinned um, being black, like there is a certain amount of like division in thoughts that I have to think about. I would just like to say like, it's really important that if you're going to love somebody who doesn't look like you, you have to love all of them. If my wife was, if my wife was white, like, and, and I keep saying this, but I really am in love with you and you, just you, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So if you look differently, like, I would still be in love with you the same. But even though I'm in love with you, like, there's something I have to pay attention. I probably would be a little bit more aware of what other people are thinking outside. Now, if you're going to be with somebody of a different race, like, you have to know that other people are going to hate, you know what I'm saying, and have be irritated or whatever. But that's their problem, and that's not your problem. Mm-hmm. Um, I would want to, like, encourage my son and my daughter to really, like, be affirmed in who they are and who they're choosing and making that decision and understanding what the oppositions are going to be with that. I wouldn't discourage, ever discourage my child to be with one race versus another. Yeah. We just don't want our children. Can I just, can we reiterate that? Okay. That's not what we are trying to do at all, but we will like, what did you say? Were you about to say that? I just want them to understand the beauty in themselves. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, We don't want, I wouldn't want my son dating a white woman because it's a fetish. Yeah. And I don't want them being dated because it's a fetish. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you have, like, I saw this beautiful video today on Instagram. This little girl, black little girl, was sitting in between two uh, her soon to be uh, white parents who were about to adopt her. Mm. And they opened, she opened this letter and it was like, You're now adopted. It was like the most beautiful thing. Ever, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And it was like this genuineness that was like real. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Um, but when you go back to like every every kid needs a home. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, but some people literally see black kids and I want a black baby. Yeah. Um, 
it reminds me a lot of like the Lion King when his, when Mufasa died, right? Simba went away and like wandered in the desert and Timon and Pumbaa found him. And they looked at Simba and they were like, hmm, maybe he'll be on our side. Like maybe we can raise this child and he'll, and he won't be like a lion. He'll be like this kind of hybrid version. Um, and that's what I don't want my children being seen as like these, because honestly, like when Theo got on that billboard, I was like, dang, that's super dope. But I thought in my head, like, it's not going to be like this forever. Mm. Like, they're not going to see him as this sweet, innocent little mm. kid who's throwing up the peace sign. Like, he's going to get mistaken identity and look like somebody who's not supposed to be some. He's going to look just like Uncle John. He's going to look just like his uncle. And his Uncle John's handsome. His Uncle John's handsome, but his Uncle John has been stopped <laughs> by the police several times. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, his, we were in New York and his Uncle John was standing outside a coffee shop smoking a cigarette and they thought he was homeless. And they told him to move from in front of the coffee shop. Oh, my shop goodness. When he was going to go in there, but he didn't want to smoke right directly in front of the, the mm-hmm. store. So he smoked to the side of the store. Mm-hmm. But they kicked him. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's like, my son is going to have to deal with those same mm-hmm. things, even though he's adorable. Mm-hmm. I can't pretend that there's differences between us. I think those differences are beautiful. If I'm in a situation and I'm hanging around my white friends and the police come... I'm not saying nothing. I'm relying on my white friend to get to talking because this guy ain't saying nothing. Whatever he's saying. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just real talk. There's certain things that are great about our differences and like we're different and that's Mm -hmm. okay. It's okay to celebrate that. And I want to say too that just because we're pro-black doesn't mean we're anti-white. Yeah, just because we're pro-black doesn't mean we're anti-white. We still love all cultures and celebrate all cultures. Like, I'm intrigued by so many different um, cultures. But I just I just want I just want to make that clear. Just because we love our people and the color of our skin and we want to celebrate our people. Because, guys, we're not that far removed from racism. No, we're, we're still in racism. I mean, we're not that we're not far, far removed, removed from, from slavery. slavery. <laughs> yeah. And segregation. Yeah. Like, we still have people in our families who live during those days, who right. are alive. I just want to reiterate that we can talk about race all we want to, but ultimately, like, we don't care. Like, we really, I, I and I think we, yeah, really we, do not care. We do not. Whether or not our kid Blake's dates a black person, I will challenge motives and being like, yo, make sure mm-hmm. you're doing this for the right reasons mm-hmm. and not just because there's a certain stereotype or whatever that goes along with these people. Like, have a pure heart in that way. But more importantly than anything, more important than race, my 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 chief, like what I care most about is my children being equally yoked. Yeah. And that's even if like, okay, my children walk with the Lord and they're dating someone who doesn't walk with the Lord, get out of that relationship. If my children walk away from the Lord and they're not with the Lord and they're dating someone who's a believer, I'm telling that person to stay away from him because he's going to taint you. Yeah. Like I care about their personal relationship with the Lord. Like, you know, and so. We care. Yeah, we care. I don't want to put words in your mouth. No, that's not putting words in my mouth. I care too. Yeah. I don't I don't look at black men sideways when I see them with white women. Yeah. I don't look at black women sideways when I see them with white men. I'm glad that you found someone who loves you. Mm-hmm. Um I feel like it's important to have conversations before you get married, before you're in relationships about the depths of who you are. Some people really won't think about them being black all the time because they're they grew up around, you know, different cultures. However, when when something happens and you realize, man, I really do care about my blackness or I really do care about black boys dying or I really care about, you know, this over here and the poverty mindset and like the the prison system and how like they're slaves in prison and how black people or people of color are more prone to being arrested Mm -hmm. for smaller charges and being held because they can't make bail. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
I care about those things. You know, I read. I think there's a difference. Nathaniel said, I think there's a difference between trying to make our communities diverse and trying to make our experiences diverse. To a certain extent, I can't control what my community looks like. I can invite people into it, but I can't make them stay. However, I can make my experience diverse. In trying to make a diverse community, the burden of responsibility seems to always fall upon the minority, as if they have to choose to exit what may be natural to them for the sake of making everyone else feel better. Totally relate. Yeah, and we assimilate to other cultures. Oh, yeah. Always. Yeah. I connect with... We had to like kind of redefine what black is to a certain extent. What do you mean? I love Martin Luther King, but I also like Old Dirty Bastard, the rapper. I like I Wu-Tang. I like Wu-Tang. Mm-hmm. I like Cardi B. Mm-hmm. But I also love Eric Thomas. And I... Also love, um, you know what I'm saying? Like, I also love, I don't know who any of these people are. Okay. <laughs> but like, like I love, like, like black is defined as us, but there is no like one culture that we, like we, we don't, because we're all like divided through all like these different countries, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like we have learned to define our blackness differently. Mm. And so... Certain things that we do, you know, like we, we go to church and then we listen to this music and we do this because it's all a part of black culture. You know what I'm saying? And so we're just so different. Like we're just such different people. And I feel like those things are to be celebrated about us, even though they may be misunderstood. Hmm. Like I don't look down on my cousins who be wilding. Mm-hmm. Like because I understand my cousins. You know, and I hope they don't look down on me for the stuff that I'm going through and the stuff that I'm doing, you know. Um, But we aren't any less black because we are, we swing a a, a certain way, you know. I find myself attaching myself to a a bunch of different parts, parts of being black. For example? Dang, it's like, you know, we could go from playing spades and it being hella loud to like in the kitchen to in church to like turning up to the latest hip hop record. Like we, it's just so much about our culture that certain people would be like, oh, these are church people. Or these are people who, um, do you know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't, I don't think I'm gonna be doing a very good, good job explaining it. Wu Tang is for the children, amen. Um, I understand what you guys are saying. My brother has always preferred Hispanic women, which is fine, but I never understood why he doesn't appreciate or find the beauty in black women. And I, I don't know how I would challenge that. I think some people have a preference. And when I, last, last episode or two episodes ago, I said, I have an issue with preference. Yeah. Because I feel like preference is kind of like discrimination. Because I have a preference for black women. However, I've never dated a white woman before. So that's discrimination. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, I, I, I have never done that so it is discrimination to a certain extent oh this is another good point defining ourselves by our culture instead of our appearance seems to be acceptable for white people in america but not for minorities which is probably why the rhetoric of black people is always black and white nathaniel's on it very good point point. and actually this brings up you nice segue into this question that someone asked on instagram they said how do you think your kids growing up in socal will affect your kids dating preferences and I think because they're growing up in SoCal, they're going to be a lot more open yeah. to to a variety of people. And the interesting thing is I was having a conversation with a friend who's also in an interracial relationship, and she brought up that she feels safer here in Southern California than she would feel in other parts of the country being married to a white man. And which, some people are like... I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, that. Some people are like... Some people are in relationships that their in-laws... Totally disagree with everything about them. Yeah. And I think it's okay to want your your in-laws to like you. Yeah. And it's okay to want to like feel loved and welcome in their home and not hating, like gearing up and preparing your heart to hate Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah. Or having your kids kind of like hushed about their blackness or whatever. Yes. And that's the thing, guys. Like I've had conversations with women in interracial relationships who have in-laws who basically try to ignore the fact that they have black blood in them. 
Come on now. Like to say that that is not going to eventually affect like your children, your grandchildren. Like I'm thinking about, okay, yeah, my child decides to be in a relationship with so-and-so. But if their parents or their family doesn't accept them, then that's going to creep into like my grandchildren's heart in some kind of way. Does that make sense? Like there's going to become, it doesn't have to be, and maybe I shouldn't speak it out, but it could come to a point where my children have children who happen to be my grandchildren, and then their other side of the family might speak things to them against their blackness. But if we're going to have grandchildren that are mixed, I'd rather them embrace all parts of their being and all parts of the cultures that affect who they are. Yeah. And and so like as being a child of God, like your identity is in Christ and that's what matters most. But let's not think about how God made you as well. You know, he made you how he did and you see things differently. Okay. So there were a couple of people who responded to that comment about um, perspective being a discriminatory or whatever. Crystal said, I never thought about it that way. Maybe it's a prejudice, but I think for minorities, it's almost protective. We have a preference towards cultures that make us feel safe. At least I do. Mm. That is a very good point. Crystal dropping bars, real bars. Um, Nathaniel, to say that it is racist to have a racial preference would mean that it's prejudiced to have any kind of non-racial preference as well, like a height preference or a religious preference. Mm. However, we have to work hard to discover whether our preferences are born out of the things we enjoy or out of the things we detest. Ooh, Ooh. Nathaniel. Can I join your church, <laughs> your life group? Yes. For real. Hey, this coffee's strong. <laughs> <laughs> George says convos my me and my wife be having all the time. Yeah. Um yeah, so if you're going to be in a relationship relationship, bottom line, my main point I think is that it's okay to react however you want to react. But oh, the beauty about being in interracial relationships is that your family gets to experience something different and they get to kind of marry um, and understand other cultures. I think one of the biggest things we can do is get to know people outside of our friend group, outside of our comfort zone. Um, I think it's interesting that we do this type of research and we expand our horizons and get to know people uh, who are different than us. Um, and that be political views, sexual orientation, color, race, culture, whatever. Like, I feel like you should get to know someone outside of your comfort zone. Um, now, if you're going to date someone or marry someone outside of your, uh, you know, cultural, religious, or like you have to think about everything you're weighing there. Like you have to weigh every single thing. Uh, and I think that's okay for you to be kind of taken aback by certain things people may bring to you. Uh, because I know for a fact that in order for us or some some black people to exist in a white world or in a white family, they have to minim minimize their blackness. They have to quiet themselves because they know they can't. They have to choose their battles. And if your whole time you're sitting there, every dinner or every situation you're sitting there trying to like diminish your blackness, it's gonna build some type of bitterness over time. And so. I would just challenge you to like really be really invested in not just that person, but who they are to the core. This is the first podcast where we're actually giving advice. Mm. Most of the time we kind of like You're giving advice. I'm just I'm just here. Yeah. I feel like it's important for you to be in love with that person and their process and who they are becoming and not to try to diminish the parts of them that you don't understand or you don't agree with. You know? Babe, how married are you? I'm so married that I went to go oh get you tampons. Gosh. Went to go get you tampons the other day. Don't try to delete nothing. I tried to get her tampons the other day, and she sends me a picture of what the tampons I'm supposed to get. So I'm in Target. I'm getting the tampons. And the picture of what she sent me was the exact thing I picked up. So I grabbed it, and I took a picture of it. Boom. It says super, regular, something, something. And then she goes... Do you find one that says regular? And I was like, it says regular on it. But she says, it also says super. And so I was like, well, I'm leaving. Like, I'm going home. Because 
I didn't want to be because other women were in the aisle <laughs> and they were like looking for tampons and then they saw me kind of creep up behind them and they were like, mm, I'm going to turn around and look at the shaving cream because this guy's a creeper. I'm sitting here in the longest time like trying to read the word super regular. No, super regular, regular. That's not it. This say extra whatever. <laughs> and I'm like trying to read everything and I don't know what's going on. So I grabbed the tampons I think she wanted. And then I text her and she said, those aren't the right ones. I said, well, this is what you're getting. <laughs> <laughs> and I brought those home. And that's just how married I am. <laughs> Babe, oh my gosh. how married are you? Oh my goodness. I don't even know. I'm so married that I had a really good day in which I made you breakfast, lunch, and dinner today. Very good. You <laughs> did. You hooked me up. I, I, and had I was a, surprised because like you had told me you made me lunch and I completely forgot about it. You did. Yeah. It sat in the microwave for quite a while. Yeah. But thank you. You're welcome. All right, guys. And, and that's, that's just, just how, how married, married we are. are.